Okay, hi again everyone. Thanks for your patience. We just uh, gave a couple of minutes there for a few more people to arrive to today's session. And thanks so much for joining in on this Friday. I don't know where everyone is today, but it is actually sunny here in Vancouver, which is some kind of miracle. Our weather is usually much more similar to Seattle. Uh, we are in a rainforest. We do get a lot of rain, but uh, we've had sun the past few days, which is uh, great. Makes winter seem a little more tolerable to people like me who cannot stand winter. Excellent. Well, let's get started. We'll probably go for about a half hour to 45 today. Um, depends a little bit on how fast I talk and what kinds of questions we get in. But the subject matter today is all about invoicing and expenses. And do be encouraged to type questions in as I go. Um, I'm happy to answer them either as I go or we'll make sure they're answered before we wrap up today's session. There are no silly questions. This may be new to some of you. This may be old hat to others. Um, but invoicing did get a recent makeover. So that's uh, bringing up more questions than uh, than maybe normal, but uh, or maybe for, for users who've uh, been working with invoices a long time, you may have questions now that we've changed things up a bit. And yes, my sentence formation will probably uh, be at about that level of quality throughout the call today. All right, let's go ahead and log in. Hopefully, everyone can see the screen I'm sharing here. I was just on the function point site there, and I'm just going to go into my test environment as usual, so pardon the mess. And the way I thought I would go today, uh, just landing here on my classic dashboard view, would be to start with just making a single, you know, straight up interim invoice. Um, from there, maybe make a batch, uh, try to make a deposit invoice as well, and uh, look a little bit back at the printouts, how you can make those printouts look like more of your own, and then uh, also make sure we look at expenses. But uh, I'm flexible. So if people want to direct me otherwise or have other suggestions or things they'd like to try to shove into today's call, just feel free to type those in there. Um, I am co-pilot free, which is fine. Uh, so keep, uh, keep in mind if you don't see your question or hear your question getting answered right away, I probably just haven't had a chance to look at it yet. All right, well, let's get going here. So from my test environment, uh, I want to just make an invoice for a job in my system. And once you do have a job in the system, you certainly can invoice for it. Uh, let's just pick, I'm just going to pick this trifold brochure uh, job here. Now I can click directly on that job. It'll take me to the job details page. And on any job details page, you're going to have this add invoice button up in the top right corner. From this page I've landed on, which is the summary tab, this is fairly new to the system, you get a nice little overview of what's going on with this job. Now this is one that I just put together yesterday and there's not a lot of data in it, uh, so this page will get to be more interesting um, as you uh, do more intricate work on your jobs, not just this little one like I've done, but right from here we can see the estimates approved, there's a couple of contacts, haven't been any emails or notes associated. And I love this little section where I can see I've estimated 29 hours and haven't tasked out any of those hours yet. And I've only tracked one billable hour so far. So lots of interesting information, <clears throat> excuse me, on this page that you can hover over to see more of and even drill into to go to list views of, of the timesheets associated. Now, what I like to do before I invoice, this is me. Uh, certainly not something you have to do. I like to go to the financials and just sort of take a quick look at what's going on for this job. Now, depending on what you base your invoices on, you may or may not want to take this step. Um, but it, again, it's something I like to do just to get a high level look. Okay, my estimated values, actual quantities and values, if there are any uh, variances, what previously invoiced amounts may be there and the like. Something that some clients aren't aware that they can do from this financials tab, and it is permission based, is where we've got this hour of actuals. We can drill in to see we've got a non build timesheet there and can even edit the timesheet from here. So we can see I put in a timesheet yesterday for an hour. So kind of a neat little thing you can do from here if I needed to change the applied billing rate or change the service group to which the time was going or even the work date or anything else there, I'm able to do that from here. All right, so I want to make an invoice. Pretty straightforward. I'm just going to choose Add Invoice. It's going to bring up a little, you know, pop-up window, whatever you'd like to call it right here. I've got my job name and number at the top of the page, my job name and number repeated as my invoice name here. Now you can lock that field down so that it always will be the job name and number will become the invoice name and number or you can have that field be open for editing. 
I'm going to leave it as the default, which is picking for invoice type, which is interim. This just means it's not the last invoice and probably not the only invoice I'm gonna to put together for this job. I've got my invoice date here, which I can change. Something I find really neat uh, with the system here is that it's giving me information. So there's one on invoice timesheet and no expenses on this one. That timesheet I know that I put in yesterday. So if I were to change this date, let's say to the 1st of November, the system knows, oh yeah, there are no uninvoiced timesheets from the 1st of November previous. So depending on the date of the invoice, you may see different information. You can choose at this point what to calculate the value of the invoice from. You can choose none. You can choose to have it be just sort of a clean slate for you to type values into. You can base it on actuals, estimated, or remainder of either of those. Now, something that we did update, I'm so glad with the new invoicing module, is that if I make a decision here, get to the subsequent page and think, oh shoot, I forgot to do something, um, or I need to change something, you can. So you're really not locked down like you previously were with the invoicing module. So I'm just going to leave it as estimated for now. I can choose a billing percentage at this point if I know that I need to be, be billing 50% of the estimated value. I could put that in here just with 50 and I can apply taxes as needed here as well. Again, if I forget to do either of those things or I do any of those things incorrectly, I can change them on the subsequent page here. When I hit create, that will create the invoice. That's also a big change that's happened as well. It used to be several pages that you would go through before you were actually like, ah, oh, I'm finally on my invoice details page here. And that's okay. I mean, I, I don't want to throw the old invoicing module under the bus. I just really am super impressed with the new one that has been a long time coming. So when I hit create, I will be on the invoice details page immediately. The invoice has been created. I can then make a few more choices here. So everything in the top of the page above that gray line, that's pretty much what we just picked on the previous page. It's interim, it's based on the estimated, I've got my contact info and the name and date of, um, sorry, the date of the invoice and the name of my contact there. Down below here is where you're probably gonna be getting into doing more fancy stuff. And you certainly can, you know, put in descriptions for any of these line items if you would like lot more room to see how to do that now. If I wanted to change the date of my invoice, I could. If I wanted to change the billing percentage, I could. So let's say I think to myself, no, I really only want to bill 50% of the estimated. I can put that 50 in, click refresh. The system does the math for me, thank goodness, because I'm sure no, uh, no superstar at math. And I can keep doing that if I need to, if I say, oh, actually 25% of the estimated. Now let's say I want to type my own values in here. Or actually, let's say I want to bill based on the actuals. I can just, like in the old system, but a lot more clear now, if I click on actuals, it's now populated that information in and it's kept the 25% billing percentage in there for me. What I can also do is say, I want to bill the remainder. Click on remainder, it fills that in for me again, giving me the 25%. Or I can say I want to bill invoice. So clicking here will empty the values. And I can take that 25% out, let's say. And if I'd like to, I can type in what I'd like to charge here. So I could say I want to charge 450 bucks there. And I want to charge 150 bucks there. I can just decide as I wish what I want to calculate or what I want to, sorry, type in. And it calculates there for me. I'm going to stick with my old plan here. I'm going to go back to 50% of estimated. Ta-da, there it is all ready to go. Ah, something I should point out as well. Where we have tracked that hour of time, we've got a little arrow here. And I can choose to drill in here. The system by default is saying, all right, well, you've dated the invoice for the 22nd. The time was tracked on the 21st. We should include this timesheet as part of this invoice but I do have the option to say, yeah, you know what? Leave this timesheet out. I don't want it to be applied to this invoice and uh, remove it from being part of this invoice just with one little click there. If you're happy and ready and like the way the invoice is looking, you can click save. I'll show you a couple of other neat little tricks with it though. You can, through these little up down arrows, change the sort order of the service group. So if you wanted printing to be at the bottom, Their printing is now at the bottom. So pretty nifty, things like that. 
Again, I'm just going to save that change. And my invoice is done. Now I can go the routine of printing this up, saving it to my machine as a PDF and sending it off to my client as I wish. But a new feature with the invoicing module is this notify client button. So as long as I have a contact associated to this invoice and that contact has an email address in my FP system, I can send the invoice directly to them through FP. Now something that's come up from a couple of clients is a little bit of disappointment over the fact that the system uh, sends it out from, from the system. How do I put this? It comes from no reply at functionpoint.com as opposed to your email address. Now, the reason this is the case is because it, it, it is a limitation just by, how do I phrase this appropriately? Um, we are not an email provider, and I gather that limits our ability to try to mask ourselves as your email. So if we were suddenly trying to email out of our function point system pretending to be you, it would get marked as spam, it would cause a bit of trouble. Uh, all that kind of stuff is a little bit admittedly over my head, but I know it has come up from some other clients just saying, hey, wait a second, why, are they, why is the message coming from no reply at function point? I'm afraid that is the way it has to be for now. It's something we, we're constantly trying to investigate to see if we can find a better option, um, especially given you know the reactions we've had from a couple of clients who have been disappointed. But if that isn't something you want, um, what I'd recommend doing is to come to notify client. And instead of sending it to the client, you can send it as a test to yourself. So you'll be logged in, you'll be the current user send it to yourself, it will attach itself to an email, come to your email inbox from no reply at functionpoint.com and perhaps from there forward it to your client because then the attachment will be there. Otherwise, just save it to your machine, print it up, save it to your machine and then uh, send it from your own machine. I have a question and just want to take a look at that. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, from Christy, and I hope I understand you correctly. What I'd recommend, is, what Christy has asked, <laughs> before I'm expecting anyone to read my mind, she's asked if we can look at an invoice that's just going to have a total with a general description. And that is something you can do. Um, what I'd want to know is if you're is that reflective of what the estimate and job looks like? Is that it is a one line item estimate and job or is it a multi line item estimate and job that you want the invoice to just be one line item? Um, the reason I ask is because our, our game plans would be a little bit different. If you've got a one line item job estimate, that will become a one line item invoice and, and you're, you're pretty much set in that way. Ah, but yes, it is a multi-line estimate and job and a one line invoice and that's totally doable. Um, what I'd recommend is that we handle that through printing. So let's uh, maybe come back to that momentarily if that's, if that's okay. Let's just come back to that in just a moment. All right, let's go ahead. So we've got our invoice. You can send it to your client. Otherwise, we are done. So I'm just going to save this change. Can be really just a very few clicks to make your invoice. Let's go ahead and look at making a deposit invoice. This is something that's changed recently as well. It used to be that you're only able to make a deposit invoice uh, for an active job. You can now make a deposit invoice against a company or a job. So let's say you've got a new client they haven't decided what work they want to do with you yet, uh, but they want to give you some money just to sort of prepare you for the work that's going to come that's yet to be determined. So let's go ahead and look at that. Let's add a new company to my system here. And I'm going to be very unimaginative. Oh. I keep going with my Marvel comic. Uh, okay. And let's just put them at, mm -hmm. put them in Vancouver. Why not? Oh, maybe spell Vancouver correctly. Okay. Don't need to put too much in here. Put them in as a client and they are architecture. So we've got this new company in my system now. And what we can do is we have the option to add an invoice, which seems strange. Why can we add invoice when we don't have any jobs yet? What we'll do is we'll hit add invoice and it's only going to give us the option to put a deposit. 
and it's giving us even a little message saying, hey, there's no jobs to make an interim or final invoice here. You can only make a deposit, which is fine. We're going to make that a deposit for $5,250. Not going to apply taxes. It's going to my office here. And let's hit create. We have now the deposit invoice details page in front of us, which is pretty basic, and a lot of this information has already been filled in for us. So the deposit subtotal is there, that it's a, sort of a retainer account I want it to go to, to my accounts receivable. Uh, I can put in a contact if I had one or a PO number. I could put in any terms if I had them. And I may want to put in a deposit description. Uh, so deposit. from client for work that's yet to be determined. I could put in payment notes if I had them or anything like that, but deposits can be pretty simple and just make it save it up. Now, if the client has actually given us the money, we may want to edit the details here and say, oh yeah, they gave me a check for 5250, so I have received the money and they did that today. We'll submit that again. Now we haven't used any of that deposit yet because we haven't done any work for this client yet. Let's just go back to that company. We've made a deposit against them. It's now sitting under the invoices tab. And let's say they've now come to us and want some work done. So I'm just gonna quickly add an estimate here. Quickly, quickly put in some oh, posters here. Put in a due date, just show you how quickly we can get this stuff in here. Let's say there's some design, some printing. Keep it simple. We can put in estimated values, as I'm sure quite a few of you do. There we go. Save that up. Turn it into a job. Let's say clients, you know, staff are tracking time. If they're not, whatever the case may be, we're ready to invoice for this guy. We can add our invoice. We can still choose it to be an interim invoice. We'll base it on the estimated values, let's say. Click Create. And what we'll see on this invoice page is that the deposit is available here for us to use. So if we wanted to apply some or part of this deposit to this invoice, we certainly could. And I'm really liking the way that's looking. It's very clear that it's a different line. The numbers will be reflected appropriately. So let's say we wanted to uh, put $2,000 of the deposit here. Now immediately the invoice is only for $2,000 less. And our deposit back on the deposit page will show how much is left appropriately. So we've saved that. Let's just go back to this company. Let's go back to the company, to the invoices tab. And we can see we've now got the deposit invoice. Oh, that balance isn't showing for me appropriately, so I will get that looked into. That's disappointing. But we do see our other invoice here. So let me just make a note to myself. Actually, I'm going to take a little screenshot there, too. Okay, taking screenshots. All right. Now, I've had a few more questions come in, so let me just take a look at that. Okay, great question from Patrick there. Uh, Patrick's asking uh, if I could explain the best practices on how to use interim invoices, deposit, and final, and what the consequences on job statuses and anything else uh, along those lines. And that's a great question. Uh, let's go ahead and let's just get to a job, or let's just choose the add invoice button, just so we'll have that in front of us. So the deposit invoice, I think I hopefully, I went through that pretty quickly a moment ago, but hopefully that's looking pretty clear. That is a situation where the client is giving you money uh, for work that maybe hasn't been determined as yet. Uh, they want to sort of maybe put you on uh, a reserve you, sort of give you a little uh, cash advance, uh, some, some money towards work, that, but they're not sure which job or jobs that that money may be going towards. Interim 
is the one I see used most often. And, and really, I would say the best practice is to use interim most of the time. The reason I say that is that if you go ahead and use a final, final will close the job. So if you make a final invoice, that will in turn move the job status to closed or an alias of closed. It will take it off your dashboard and it will mean that time can no longer be tracked to that job. So use the final invoice routine thoughtfully. We do have clients that, that use that very, very uh, often, and uh, they've got a team that's great about making sure their time is always tracked right up to the right day so that when a final invoice is created, there aren't any staff members sort of going, uh oh, I, I meant to put some timesheets in and now that job is gone. That's really the only major conclusion from using any of these, or consequence, I should say, from using any of these invoice types is that the final invoice type will change the status of the job. Uh, great follow-up question from Patrick. What's the impact of interim on status of the job? Nothing at all. Uh, the only invoice type that has any impact on job status is final. Otherwise, job status is controlled uh, by you by clicking and choosing different job statuses from the job details page. But interim will not adjust or change the status of the job at all. Only final will move the job status to a status of invoiced, which is an alias of closed. Excellent. Hope that answers the question. All right. Well, let me, um, before I go into the land of batch invoices, let's go back to Christy's question just about how we want the uh, invoice to look and how you can set it up so that your invoice uh, is, is maybe just one line item with a description and, and a, a number. Now, they're the first way and probably the best way to do that. Let's just go back, let's say, to an invoice here. We've made a couple already. I'm just navigating back to one we made earlier. So I've got this invoice here. I can edit and change it. And let's say I only wanted this invoice to say like design and a chunk of money and that be the only thing that shows up. What I'd recommend <clears throat> you do, and I'll show you another way to go about this as well, is that if you know you want the entire invoice to be $2,000, let's say, let's take out some of these things. Let's clear the values. So at the design line, let's see, I want it to be, <clears throat> excuse me, $2,000. And I'm going to leave all the other values at zero or blank. And that should give us what we're after, aside from my little piece of punctuation there. So now the total of the invoice is two grand. That's going to show at the design level. When I go to print it, actually, I can go into print parameters. Oh, no, I cannot. Sorry. Pardon me. When I go to print it, I'll be able to see what it looks like. So when I look at it, it's got design, $2,000, but it's also got that concept line. It's like, yeah, I don't really want that. I just really want it to say maybe design two grand and not have that subsequent line there. And that's something we're gonna control from back in the admin section. So we're gonna save this here. We're gonna go back from admin into printing preferences. Now we do have documents on all of this, so uh, don't be alarmed. I'm gonna go into the My Printouts tab. There's my, I've got a couple of different single invoices. Neither of them are on right now. Uh, so I want to, let's just add a printout. Let's create one. So I want to create my, you know, single line invoice. I'm going to choose the printout type of invoice single. And that's all I need to do. You can add brandings. Um, this is something, again, we have documents on. We've done some videos on this as well, or recorded webinars on this as well. So you certainly can add branding like a watermark or letterhead, whatever you'd like in the background. I won't get into that at the moment. And we're getting a little preview here of all the items we're going to get to have a say in the appearance of click save and next. Then we're going in each block by block. So for the invoice header, 
I have a lot of decisions here I can make. Do I want to show the invoice contact? Do I want to show my office address? Do I want it to be called invoice or something else entirely? For the invoice summary, do I want to show the date, title? Do I want it to be renamed? I'm not going to show project name because I don't have one. Do I want to show the description? Do I have a job image I want to show? And it's invoice details where we're going to be getting more into this line items that show. So first of all, you get the choice to change naming, which is pretty nice. Hours, no hours, scope of work to something else. Service group is what I do want to show and service is what I don't want to show. So I don't want to show any of those. I don't want to show expenses. I just want to show the service group level. I don't want to show, there is the option to have reports print automatically subsequent to any invoice, or you can just turn them all off per printout. So I can save this, approve it, go back to my invoice, Choose print. And it's now just showing design because the printout has been told, hey, just show the service group level and not the service level anymore. So Christy, I know this is a lot of information to take in. The essential way you can do it is just by having the other line items blanked out or zeroed out, just putting the value at the line item you want to show. If you need to be more detailed and say, okay, I, I don't want that set, that service, individual service line to show, I just want it at the group level, you'll need to do some printout adjustments, but I'm happy to help you with that. Um, but we could put in, you know, quite an extended description here for design so that that would show as well. So extended description things. Save that. Print again. And know that you can have up to three printouts. So you could have one that's the single line item one, the other one, you know, the special super client one, whatever you need. Um, but these can look quite nice. And again, you can have your terms not show or show. I told the system to, hey, don't show me project level info because I don't have one. Um, I've got my logo over in the corner, but if I prefer the idea of having a watermark or my letterhead being used, I could do that too. Happy to help with any of these kinds of questions. I'm, I'm a big fan of the printouts and uh, how specific and unique you can make them. We've seen quite a few clients get really, really creative with them. So uh, if I can help make other people want to do that and get into it, just let me know. Okay. Had a couple more questions come in. So just let me take a look at these. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Great question that's come in um, from Patrick and my recommendation, well, let me read his question first. Why not? Patrick has said that they never use the standard description or names when they do invoices. They like to do custom multi-lines with several amounts. Their jobs, however, only have one uh, service group formerly known as phase in them. How would you handle that? And then Patrick's subsequent question said, hey, that's something we used to do on the second page of the old invoicing module. And so I think what you guys used to do, which you certainly can still do, is good old print option B. And we've had quite a few clients use that and it does work quite well. Now print option B gives you the ability to have this look as you need for your estimate, look as you need for your job and time tracking, but look really quite entirely different for the sake of the invoice. The way you'd go about doing that so you'd come into print parameters. From here, you'd select print option B, and this is where you can start putting in custom descriptions. So I could say, uh, work ABC for $415. Add a line, XYZ, 
whatever you'd like to put really for $245. Add DF stuff. See my creativity here, everyone? For $320. So I've got a value there. I can click Submit. What the system's going to do is say, hey, whoa, wait, are you doing? What are you up to? Um, your printout amount, this print option B, is different from by 1020 bucks to, to what I had on the original invoice there. And then you can just say, yeah, that's fine. But it's nice that you do get a little warning in case your values don't match. And were I to print now, I am going to see that entirely different listing of work. I'm still only seeing the service group level, which is what I want. But I am seeing there's A, B, C, X, Y, Z, and D, E, F stuff for that totally different value. So absolutely different wording, different numbers, whatever you need it to be. And that is again achieved just so through print option B. Ah, <laughs> well, Patrick, uh, Patrick has written saying that he had thought it had disappeared altogether. And I'm, I'm sorry you thought that. Uh, yeah, it's just in a slightly different spot because now we don't have that multi sort of click through to get to the, uh, the invoice details page. But yeah, it's just up in print parameters and it's that print option B there. That's a great question. I'm glad you asked. Okay, so we're at 33 minutes past. Let's go and quickly put a deposit, or sorry, a batch invoice in, because that's changed a lot as well, and it's pretty nifty. And then we'll look at some expenses. And of course, again, um, if you want to type in like, hey, can we go look at something completely different? Uh, I don't mind doing that either. Uh, so just let me know. We've got lots of time left here, as long as people aren't uh, feeling too lost from their desks at the moment. All right, let's go back to our dashboard. I've got a project in place. Now batch invoicing, as before, can be done either for several jobs or for a project. Um, if you're going to do it for several jobs, same routine applies. So let's say you want to come in, you'd come in to find job. Let's say you want to find all the jobs for a certain company. So I think I have a few in here for Stark. So there are four jobs here for Stark Industries and I can make a batch invoice for these jobs from here. So that is similar to how it worked before from the job find routine. And similar again, it works from a project. So if I have a project in my system, which I do, made up of several jobs, I have the add invoice button here on my project and I will be making a batch. Now something that's nice, again, it's just this one page. Those batches were icky. I have taught people those and every time I'm on those old batches I'm like oh gosh I don't I still don't think I know what half these buttons do and there was just so little functionality with that batch invoicing process. I think everyone's really going to like what we've got now. So again batch name uh, top of the list here so we can change this to be something else if we would like. So I'm going to call it you know project batch oh, 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 oh such spelling. Project batch one, two, three. I'm going to leave it as interim because I don't want to close the jobs on this project by making it final. I'm going to leave the invoice date as today. I'm going to say calculate from estimated, knowing I can change that as needed. I'm going to leave the billing percentage blank. So by default, it'll be 100%, but again, I can change it. And I'm not going to choose to add taxes right now. Now you do have this nice option at the bottom. Should the system create one invoice or not? Now, most people who used batch invoicing in the past, at least in my experiencing experience, were making a batch invoice in order to have it all on the one printout. But we did have to have that workaround. It wasn't uh, wasn't very pretty. It was just sort of mulling it on to one uh, uh, in one printout rather than really making you one invoice. And so I'm going to say, yeah, put it all on one invoice for these multiple jobs, and click create. It's going to take me to my invoice batch add page where I've got my batch name there at the top. I can put in an activity description and terms as needed again. PO number if I have one. Use the PO number, use the job taxes. These are familiar fields for anyone who did batching before. It's just a lot tidier. I can put in a description if I like. Some payment notes, you know, such as thanks for keeping your account up to date. Actually, I'll put that in and then submit it, and that'll bring everything back from the bottom. I can now see my three jobs that are part of my 
project here below and I have the option to add all three to the batch or just add individual ones. So if I only want to put this one in and this one in, I can do that. You can then see I can edit the individual invoices for part of this batch. So that's something that's really different. It used to be that you would say, yep, they're in or they're out. There wasn't the ability to be really specific per invoice per batch. So I could say, oh yeah, for this summer mailer one, I want to come in and edit it. It's going to take me to edit the invoice lines just for this invoice, just for this job. I could come in and put in different values if I wanted. I can enter values even where there aren't any. Change values where I want. I could change the billing percentage, let's say, to be 50%. can it's just not listening to me there we go again can put in different values as needed can put in descriptions and once I'm happy with that I can save it and close it can do the same for this next one so if I wanted to bill one based on estimated values one on actual values you can do that one on remainder you've got a lot of control Again, you'd have that control like we saw earlier. I don't have any actuals here on invoices where actuals do exist to come in and say, yeah, I do or don't want certain timesheets to be included in this invoice as well. Say successfully, I'm just gonna add this third one as well. So we've got all three jobs in for part of this batch. Click submit and next when you're ready. We're now on the invoice details page for this batch, and we have the option to print, print option B through print parameters, or come to print outs. And print it up, print it up with a status report. Let's just go to print, see what it looks like. Now, much like with the single invoice, you can control very greatly how these batch invoices look, how much or how little detail. Oh, I see my project batch. I forgot the A. That almost looks a little bit like a dirty word. Um, so hopefully that's quite clear about how quickly you can make a batch and how much more control you have over those batches now compared to the old days. If you wanted to change the look of your batch invoice, you'd follow the same routine. Come back to admin, into printing preferences, into the my printouts area. We'd say, yeah, I want to add a printout. Again, you can have up to three different batch invoice printouts as you like. So best batch, put the A in this time, ever. Choose my printout type of invoice batch. Hit save and next. And again, I've got all these different blocks I can go through and decide what I do or don't want to sh show, not show, rename as far as a batch goes. So it can be quite cool. So for example, back up to this batch header, by default, it's going to show as invoice. You could rename it to say batch invoice when you print it, for example. Do you want to show the batch description? Uh, let's see what else do we have here? Do you want to rename cost, scope of work, or total? So lots of options, and again, the option to include or not include those also those uh, reports about time and job status along with your invoice printouts. Okay, I had a couple of questions come in, so hang tight here. Um, good question, Christy. Christy's asking if there's a way to turn batch invoicing off. Uh, unfortunately, there isn't. Um, but if it's not something you use, uh, then, then it's not like it's going to inadvertently get in the way. Uh, when you add invoice, it's not like batch comes up as an option. You do have to sort of take quite a couple of steps to, to get to a batch. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, there isn't a way to, to have it not appear. Excellent. Let's go back to our dashboard here. Again, everything I've gone over today, we have uh, specific documents on making each of those printouts and others. We have specific documents on uh, adding invoices of each type. 
and we have uh, recorded webinars and we'll soon have quick little training videos to take you through all this stuff as well. Let's talk a bit about expenses before I let everyone go. Uh, expenses I find uh, to be pretty straightforward to use and they actually are getting a makeover at the moment so probably in January you're gonna see a very improved external expense form um, I really didn't realize well no actually I did realize how confusing our expense form was uh, now that I've seen the new one it goes in a much more sensible order for now we've got the old guy and it'll still do the job so with expenses you can always add an expense to a job by hovering over expenses, choosing external, and adding an expense. What I find works really well though, let's just go back into this posters job, let's say. If you have a job in your system that has an expense as one of the line items, you can really quite quickly create the associated expense form. Let's go to the financials. And there we've got our printing line item for the color printing. And if we go over to the far right, this plus button, from here we can directly add an external expense for this job. Click plus is gonna take us to that external expense form. I just need to input who my supplier is, any reference number that I may need to use internally or any internal description I wanna use. You can already see we've got the $500 rate. I can put in any discount percentage or discount dollar value that the supplier may have given me. Any description the supplier may have given me. So I could put in um, color copies of posters, you know, gloss. 12 by 12, whatever you'd like to put in there. Quoted for PO, you would use if you were putting a PO in, uh, and that would mean that when you print that PO up, it would have an appropriate value. You can put in if there are any markup calculations to be done, the markup percentage, total override as needed, and if you have a certain cost of goods sold or QuickBooks account, these dollar values should come back to. Otherwise, you can just click Submit. If we go back and look at the job now, back to those financials. We now, in the Actuals column for the printing, have a value there. As well, if we were to add an invoice again, We see we have the one invoice, uninvoiced external expense. And there is our printing expense now there. If I drill in, I can see the information's pulled over from the expense form. And if needs be, I can change information. Otherwise, it's all just ready there to use. Ah, great question from uh, Patrick. Uh, Patrick's asking, would it be fair to say that using projects is mostly done to be able to do one invoice for several jobs? Um, that is one reason it gets used. What I see it get used more for is when a client, let's say, has come to you and they've got, let's say they're putting on a, a festival, a concert, a, a marketplace, whatever it may be, and you are going to be doing the posters for that and you're going to do the website for that and you're going to redesign a logo for that um, and you start thinking wow that's those are several jobs several different jobs but they're really all part of this one campaign they're all part of this <clears throat> excuse me this concert or this <clears throat> Christmas market or whatever it may be the projects module would allow you to organize all those jobs under that campaign so you could have a project or campaign called Christmas market summer concert, whatever the case may be, have each of those jobs, <clears throat> estimates, jobs, brief schedules, all of that organized in that project. So it's a really nice way to organize. The benefit of it, of course, is that you can do that batch invoicing from it, get all those invoices on, all those jobs, sorry, onto one invoice through the projects module. Um, but usually people start getting into projects 
as a module when they've got that kind of work that comes in, that kind of work that's several different estimates and jobs, but really all part of one kind of overarching thing, uh, be it an event or uh, whatever the case may be. Um, it doesn't, uh, Patrick, subsequent question, do report, does the project module give you more reporting options? No, I wouldn't say so. Um, again, it's just, it's more of an organizational tool. Um, what I, things I like about it <clears throat> is that if you're looking at projects, let's say, something I really dig with the projects module yeah. that when you put a project in, you can say what your project budget was. And then right here, just from that project details page, I can see, okay, of my $100,000 budget, so far I've estimated 14 grand. I've only done, you know, just over a grand in actuals and I've just invoiced around seven grand. So right from here, I get a nice little snapshot of what's going on. You do also have at the job financials level, I could narrow down results based on a date range. Now you can do this on a job by job basis, but having those jobs organized within a project means I can do it on uh, the project level. So for several of these jobs, I've got actuals. And if I just wanted to see, okay, I can see I've done just over one grand in actuals to date, but what have I done in the last week or month, let's say. So you could narrow the results you're seeing down here by a date range. Uh, let me just see, subsequent question. Yes, uh, Patrick's question is, uh, can you have closed jobs in a project and maintain the project as open as long as the other jobs are open in it? Uh, yes, the project has its own status, so we can see the project is open. So I could have an open project full of closed jobs if I wanted to, probably not something you would need to do, but yeah, you could certainly have a project, project open, have several jobs in it, um, as jobs finish, they could close, but they could remain part of the project. You would still see them listed in the jobs list. And I think that even does show status, doesn't it? Let's get here and see. Yeah, so right from the jobs view, you can see which ones are closed or open or invoiced or whatever job statuses you may have in place. So you can see them all in one spot. Now, another thing to keep in mind with projects is that you don't have to start with one. This is something that uh, clients in the past have run into being concerned about. You don't need to come into your function point system and go, ah, I know I have a project, I'm going to make one and then put jobs underneath it. You may have a few jobs out there floating around and go, ooh, I didn't realize when the first one came in that these were all sort of going to be part of one campaign or one big event that the client was going to have me work on. So you can have them out there floating in the ether, create a project and then organize them under it. So you don't have to come at it from one direction is what I'm trying to get at. Um, so if you have jobs out there, you can still create a project and sort of back order them into that project umbrella. Um, Patrick, on not next Friday, but the Friday after, uh, the session that happens on Fridays at this time, it's going to be all about projects. Uh, so that may be one you want to sign up for, but you, you're probably getting most of that information just in what we're talking about here. Um, but yeah, I was going to do a session just on projects because there is, it is a bit of a mystery area. Not, not a ton of people use it, but I think once people wrap their heads around and go, oh, this is actually just a really nice way to keep my work sort of sorted in a, in a great way, um, you'll get more into it. So I did want to do a session just about that. So that's what, uh, not next Friday, the 29th, I think it's the 6th of December, what we're going to be talking about. And of course, if you have subsequent questions to the call ending today, just let me know. Anyone's welcome to drop me a line, uh, just emma at functionpoint.com, and I'll always answer as quickly as I can, uh, direct you to a document, whatever you may need. Excellent. Well, I think I've gone through everything I wanted to go through. Um, I'm really digging the new invoicing module. I hope everyone else is as well. We'd love to hear your feedback, though. And again, we have documents, videos on everything I went through today, including all to do with the printouts. Uh, where you may want to look is come over to Help, choose Training. From here, you, you don't need to pick a certain chapter. You could just do a search. Uh, for printouts, for projects, for invoices, whatever the case may be. But I would say for probably most of the people on today's call, where I'd recommend you come to is the library. 
Now, the library has a lot in it, so don't be put off. The library is the be-all, end-all, catch-all of, of all things documentation-wise for Function Point, including videos. Uh, you can certainly search from here or just scroll through. You can see what the topics are here along the side. Drill in to see what you want to know more about. So if you're wanting to know more about printouts, you can see there's a whole bunch of documents on creating your own printouts there. A whole bunch of documents on invoicing, which we have divided up based on the current module. There's still a few people who are on the current one and the new one that was upgraded. Uh, people have been slowly getting upgraded to over the past few weeks. And so there's documents in there all about uh, creating deposits, changing invoices, marking them as paid, uh, creating an invoice using actuals or estimated. So hopefully specific documents to take you through whatever you need to learn more about. But if you don't find what you're looking for, let me know. It may need to be written or it may be hiding somewhere. So just drop me a line anytime. Okay, everyone. Well, thank you so much for being a part of this today, listening to me blather and uh, troop up for my words as usual. Uh, always nice to have a few clients on the call. And uh, thanks for the questions. That always helps me uh, keep some structure here to have some questions and other things to go through. So again, let me know if you need anything else. Otherwise, I hope everyone has a really nice weekend, restful, and uh, maybe some sunshine in your neck of the woods as well. All right. Thanks again, everyone. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.